What is going on guys? We are back playing some more Surviving with Rotary Craft. Now today guys, we're going to be messing around with the Pulse Jet Furnace. So last episode we worked on producing some jet fuel, and that is one of the three key components that you're going to need to actually run the Pulse Jet Furnace. The other two are going to be an input of water, which is pretty easy to do, and along with that you're going to need to input power at a very high speed. Now that one's a little bit harder to do, but we're going to go over how to do that today using a performance engine and using two different gearboxes, a 16 to 1 and an 8 to 1. So I've got all the stuff in here that we're going to need we've got the performance engine stuff over here along with the additives and I am going to have to cook down a couple more ethanol crystals but that'll be no issue then we've got the setup for water the DC electric engine pump and shaft junction we've got all the stuff that we're gonna need to actually craft the pulse jet furnace itself and then we've got the stuff for crafting the gearboxes so we have to do a little bit of crafting today but it shouldn't be that bad and the setup actually shouldn't be that rough now that we've already got the jet fuel production out of the way so I believe each process is going to use up roughly 100 millibuckets, and I've got like 35 buckets of jet fuel, so I've got way more than enough. Don't need to worry about that at all. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is make the gearboxes here. So we've got the 8 to 1 gearbox and the 16 to 1 gearbox. They're both going to be set in acceleration mode because torque does not matter for the um, from the performance engine to the pulse jet furnace. All that matters is the speed. So just keep that in mind, speed and power. But of course, it doesn't matter. The power doesn't shift at all as long as we don't screw up these gearboxes. Uh, the next thing that we can do is set up the performance engine. So get this and we got to make the ignition unit. Oh my gosh. Okay. Click this stuff in here then. Got to make the... Oh, right. That doesn't go in here. Gosh, I get so messed up with these different crafting tables. I was told by someone that I can actually change a setting so that I don't need to worry about this. But because we're super hardcore guys, we're going to keep it like this. Uh, and then we can make the aluminum alloy cylinder. Only need those. And make the radiator. And we are out of inventory space. Well... That did not take very long to run out of that. Uh, you know what? We'll just... We'll throw something on the ground, and then we'll make the performance engine. Oh, I'm pretty sure I needed that for the performance engine. Okay, you know what? We'll throw the lever on the ground. We definitely don't need that. Okay, so there we go. So we got the performance engine out of the way. I know we've already crafted that before, but... You know, we haven't done it a ton, just like we have with the water stuff, so I'm not going to craft this stuff anymore, but I will still make certain things on camera like that. Now we need to make the Pulse Jet Furnace. So, this one seems pretty simple to make, just a little obsidian, but the combustor itself actually takes a good amount of crafting. It takes another ignition unit, so we got to switch crafting tables, make the ignition unit. Probably should have just made that along with the other one. Now we can make the combustor. And then the rest of it's pretty simple. The compressor just takes a lot of steel. The diffuser is really easy to make. And then you just got to get obsidian, base panels, and some regular steel. So we should be good to go on that. Now, I did have to get a lot of obsidian because today we're going to be working on processing the obsidian in the pulse jet furnace itself. So if we look at uses for obsidian uh, and go over to the pulse jet furnace, you can see it is going to make us blast glass. Now, this blast glass is going to be used... Uh, eventually to make the obsidian tank which we are then going to use to make the uranium processor which is involved in reactor craft so this is pretty much the stepping stone to move from rotary craft to reactor craft which i am pretty excited about so one thing that i want to do real quick before we actually start setting this up is come over here to the grinder where i've been processing the sugar and it is a little bit slower uh, which is why i haven't fully processed this yet right before i got on camera i went and harvested some sugar cane because we're going to need more of the ethanol crystals but we can cook down the 52 sludge i have here and that should be more than enough so we want to throw the blaze rods into the grinder and allow those to start processing and then we want to start cooking down this sludge it's going to be a little loud i know i apologize once the sound starts kicking in but shouldn't be running for too long uh, along with that the pulse jet furnace is actually going to be very loud too so that's just something to keep in mind so the reason I dug out the ground a little bit here is because we have a lot to set up and unfortunately the pulse jet furnace needs to be very far away from any flammable objects and unfortunately when I was making my base I didn't think it through very well in terms of making it out of things that aren't flammable. So a lot of the base is made out of wood, wood flooring, wood support beams, all that stuff. So I'd rather not burn down the base and unfortunately with this setup uh, a lot of these setups down here that have steam engines and stuff I could just use you know bevel gears and shafts to get all the power upstairs and then run the grinder from upstairs because the grinder does not burn things it does not catch them on fire but unfortunately the processing unit in this setup which is the pulse jet furnace itself is going to be what catches stuff on fire it's not actually the engine so 
one of the first things that I want to do is just kind of dig into the wall here and start getting some water going. And I'm going to put it behind the wall because it really doesn't matter. Uh, eventually, I'm going to redo this basement, but for the time being, I'm just kind of going to stick it back here and shouldn't be an issue. Okay, guys, so I actually decided to hop off camera and do this setup and along with that to let the furnace finish because that thing is so loud. Um, but we now have water supply that we can start piping to both the Pulse Jet furnace and the performance engine once we set them up. And keep in mind, the explosions are not small for these, okay? This explosion would devastate this entire room and portions of the base upstairs. So it is very important that you get water to these. Luckily, I was reminded by that when I was testing them out. I always test out the setups first before we mess around with them in this world. And it actually blew up there because I forgot to put any water in it. So I actually forgot to put water in both of these when I was setting it up in the creative world. And one exploded. And then I was like, man, I wonder why that exploded. And then right as I was thinking that, the next one exploded. So... <laughs> It's very important that you get water to these, I cannot stress that enough. So the performance engine is going to go right here and it'll make it really easy to just pump water like that. Oh, I always hate this, you gotta like reset the reset the block to get it to register that it... Oh wait, no, do we need to pump it into a different side? Oh, I guess we do need to pump it into a different side. Well that's unfortunate. That means we gotta curve it around here. Oh, that's so unfortunate. And I gotta use the bevel gear. For something else you know what we'll curve it around here and then i'll make a bevel gear later but i'm pretty sure i'm like completely out of steel at this point so yeah but i want the whole setup to be running this way not out into the center of the room if you're curious why i'm setting it up like this uh so we should be able to get a significant chunk of blaze powder and we can throw these in there and it should completely fill this up and then okay yeah so wow that was like a perfect amount to fill it up awesome so i'm not going to throw the ethanol crystals in there yet just because i don't want it to start running but we can start setting up the gearboxes and we are going to need to move uh, some lubricant over for both of these this is getting pretty full oh, wow it is full awesome hopefully we can start using that for some hydrokinetic engines soon uh, so get both of these gearboxes there and shift both of them into acceleration that should be good and then we need to bevel gear this right here and it needs to go from north to up so north and then up and then we throw down the pulse jet furnace so this can go right here and that should be good for that setup except we need to get water to this thing almost forgot again okay so you know what? i'm gonna Put some stone down here because this would bother me if we had dirt there behind that block and then we cover this up and that should be good now obviously we do need to move the reservoir over here to actually get the jet fuel uh, eventually i should set these up where they're actually together um but for the time being i don't actually mind moving the reservoir because i do need to go get a little bit more to continue running this so i do need to get more magma cream and i don't really feel like doing that right now so i don't mind moving that it's not gonna have to go anywhere uh and then could start running this i believe it should start functioning uh i do want to fill this in down here eventually hmm okay so we can break the reservoir and i'll just leave this fuel line here and we can throw down another fuel line over here and i think yeah we can throw this down right like that now it's full and we can throw the obsidian in there i don't think it should overheat at all it should be good to go this one should not overheat either so i think we can throw the ethanol crystals in here and allow it to start running uh so the whole system's running you can see this starts to get a little bit it's like red hot it'll start getting a little bit more red as it goes uh it is that's it's not really loud but it's like it's it's like it's got a noise to it you know like a thudding like a low thudding but while that's what I'm, not, I'm gonna stop it right now so that we can actually look at some of the information on this before it starts running uh but we are going to go to I believe it's no it's under processing so processing and pulse jet furnace so pulse jet furnace is a powerful furnace and it can't do regular smelting but it can do a lot of stuff like what we need to do for this it will get very hot and ignite nearby flammable materials which i keep pointing out because i don't want to burn my base down um, keeping it cooled with water is a necessity, like I said. Uh, that's one of the three key components to it is water, jet fuel, and the power like with high speed. Uh, there's no minimum power requirement. Uh, the jet requires high shaft speeds. The pulse jet consumes jet fuel to operate uh, and a rather large amount of it, not actually for this operation that's a little deceptive, and it receives power from below. So if we flip over here, you can see that it has a very high required speed, and we are just able to achieve that with what we're doing right here using the performance engine with additives. Uh, it is 
131 and then a decimal kiloradians per second so that's very high speed considering most machines are giving you just generic um like 512 radians per second maybe a thousand if you can get a good one so yeah speed is the main issue with running this whole setup um you can see it is now at a high enough temperature it will continue increasing a little bit i'll keep an eye on it just to make sure it shouldn't have any issue with getting to a thousand a thousand is its maximum uh temperature and then it's going to explode but as long as it's got water in there i think we're good and if we watch this we should be able to see how much it consumes yeah it, it consumes a very little amount per process i want to say it's 100 but i can't be sure yeah see it's it's consuming a very very small amount that wasn't even 100 that time but i'm not sure uh, it's somewhere around there, 100 millibuckets, but we're getting this blast glass, and then like I said, we're going to use that to start working our way into reactor craft, because we are going to, I guess we can go upstairs real quick while that's running, uh, get some more stone along with it to fill in that area, because that's going to, it's going to freak me out if we don't fill that in, get some more stone, and along with that we can get the reactor craft handbook, and you can see I'm very low on resources right now, took a lot of resources to construct this, but... Uh, if we go to the processing, the first thing in there is the uranium processor, and I assume, I, I haven't looked much into reactor craft, but I assume this is one of the early things that you're going to need, and this requires the obsidian tanks, of course. So, that is what we're going to be working towards next episode. Uh, we can fill this in right here, and I guess I put way too many ethanol crystals in there, because it does not need to run for that long. Uh, it's going to finish processing this in no time. But uh, yeah, so that's going to be it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did find it informative or entertaining in any way, please feel free to give it a like as it does help me out a lot. And uh, next episode, I think we should be getting into reactor craft, which should be very fun. But if you're still here and listening, I do want to apologize. I am going to be taking a day off tomorrow. Uh, pretty much trying to do that maybe once a week just to, you know, regain composure, send out a couple more job applications, stuff like that. Um, but yeah, so thanks for watching, guys, and I will talk to you later.